Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. Today's episode is episode 82 and the title of today's episode is Creating a Carom Billiards Scoreboard. And this came about from a question that we received in the comments on our One Man Stream YouTube channel. And the gentleman says, help me about a carom scoreboard, thank you. And uh, I'm not at all familiar with carom billiards, but and uh, if you're at all interested in the rules, I've just popped the rules up there so you can look at them briefly. So that is gonna be our focus today on One Man Stream. What we're gonna do is we're going to construct a carom billiard scoreboard, and then I'm gonna show you how you can control it uh, using vmix utc there's other ways that you can control this other than vmix utc and that would be using a an excel spreadsheet or a google spreadsheet and i've done tutorials uh, on that in the past showing you how you can incorporate data sources uh, into your vmix layout so if you have questions about that uh, i would direct you to those uh, previous tutorials okay. so this is what our scoreboard is going to look like uh, that we created for today's tutorial and it's not really anything special it's something that i stumbled across uh, uh, through a google search and so basically what this is broken up into two players you have uh, one player that i call bobby billiards the other player is connie q and you can see that they've accumulated a couple points for each one of them um, there is a designation here for innings and then there's a designation for set A and set B and then under each one of the players uh, there is an average and I've used different widgets in vmix UTC uh, in order to make these a little simpler for these two right here the one that says Bobby Billiards and the one that says Connie Q for their scores I've actually used the score widget for the average uh, since the average may contain a decimal um, I've used a uh, text widget for that, and that's going to make it a little bit simpler. Uh, that is something that you're going to have to transfer from some type of a uh, calculating format, either a spreadsheet or you know someone actually manually doing the calculations, and then you will have to enter these manually. These sets, uh, I'm going to set these up as um, text widgets as well, because I'm not sure what the scoring is on the sets and uh, the innings i'm going to set these up as a score widget also right here this is going to be a text widget where it says carom billiards uh, international tournament that's going to be a text widget as well and then i have a space up here for two uh, sponsor logos now this is actually uh, easy to build um, I've, I've just been trying some new things with vmix utc trying to use different shapes and different forms and this is something that i came up with uh, this is actually not that difficult and uh, there's a couple little tricks that I've used here um, a little bit of shading here on the ends this is a little bit lighter uh, black or a, uh, it's kind of a blackish gray it's a little bit lighter uh, than these other elements and then in order to give it uh, the 3d effect I've just put in some angles basically all I've done on this is I've created rectangles I put a fill color in for black and then I put a border color in uh, as a solid line for silver and I gave that a designation of five um, if you all are interested in how this was build, uh, built uh, please put your comments uh, below and I will go ahead and do a tutorial uh, step by step on how I built this but today is more about how to uh, actually control this through vmix UTC now, before we get started, uh, if you get a chance, please stop by our website, uh, onemanstream.com. We have the graphics that we built along the way during this tutorial series, as well as many of the UTC controllers, and they're all a couple dollars a piece, but it is a way that you can help support One Man Stream. And this is what the graphic looks like in GT Title Designer, and I try to be pretty specific in the naming of the elements uh, particularly the elements that i know that we're going to be used for scoring so like right here where it says player one name that's going to be um, this name that's going to go in right here right here where it says player two name it's going to be this player's name right here uh, p1 average text is going to be this text right here and then p1 average score is actually where we're going to input the information in and that's going to be this right here now for all of these uh, something that i try to do uh, on any the scoring things that i'm doing any of the scoring elements that i'm putting in i use this 
little drop down right here where it says shrink and that way it makes sure that whatever size box I create it's going to keep that information inside that box and it's not going to spill out over other elements. So this set a text right here as you can see when I click on it it's this set text right here and this is static. Set B text right there this is also a static text. Set a score right here and set B score right here. Now this right here where it says bottom text field, that's where it has the name of the tournament. And that is uh, also a tech, it's gonna be a text field widget uh, when we get over to vMix UTC. So what I'll do, I'm, I'm not gonna go through this step by step and show you how this was built, but what I'll do is I'll turn off some of the elements and then you can see how some of these things take place. Now you see this little, um, diagonal piece right here, this black diagonal piece right here, and this black diagonal piece right here. What I'm using these for is I have um, a border on every one of these elements. Well, sometimes those borders overlap and I don't want them to show, so what I'll do is I'll just make one of these little diagonal pieces and I'll put it over top of it, and then that way you won't be able to see um, the diagonal uh, bordering element on that particular element. So as you can see, there's quite a few elements in here. Most all these are just rectangles that I created using the button right here uh, that says rectangle. I just click on the rectangle button, I come over and I drag the rectangle out. On all of these, they're gonna have a skew of either a minus 29 or a positive 29, and that's how we get these angles here on the ends. Um, this one right here is just a little rectangular block that I made, and then I came in and made a very small rectangle that covers this area right here, and I just had to very finely adjust it over here to cover up the border on the other side uh, of that rectangle. That's how we get this cutout right here. And then you'll notice on the ends, this is a little bit lighter. I made this just a little bit lighter, as well as I did this, um, looks, looks more like an isosceles triangle uh, right here that I uh, inverted and made it a little bit lighter. And then on this left side as well, I made the fill color a little bit lighter, but I carried the silver border color through uh, all the way through on this particular layout. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and head over to vMix UTC, and here's the layout that I've started, and I'm going to show you the functionality behind all these buttons in just a moment. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the graphic in, and you can see now the graphic is up behind me. And if I come over here to vMix UTC and I click on the player one score, if I click on this reset button, it's going to take it back to zero, and I'll do the same thing for player two. It's going to take that back to zero. And then for the average, like I, I said a moment ago, this is actually a text field widget. So whatever I put in here is going to be reflected in this text field. So let's just go ahead and just change this so that you can see it for demonstration purposes. And you can see it changes to what I put in that text field. Now right here where it says Bobby Billiards, if I use uh, the backspace, it'll go ahead and take that away and you can see where it keeps the uh, information centered over here under Connie Q. I'll do the same thing. I'll backspace that, it takes that out, and you can see where it keeps it uh, pretty much centered. So let's go ahead and change this back to Connie Q, and we'll go ahead and change this to Bobby Billiards. Now let's go ahead and look behind these buttons. On this first one that says player one name, let's go ahead and click the cog, and you can see that it is a text field widget and I have it mapped to these two different components. It's actually the same scoreboard brought in twice. I'll show you the second scoreboard. The second scoreboard is this one right here and you now see it in the upper left hand corner and you'll see that when I change one, let me bring that down just a little bit so you can see both of the scoreboards are going to change and the reason why is when I did the title mapping I brought both of these inputs in and both of these inputs here are mapped to the uh, Carom Billiard scoreboard and then the player uh, player one name. Both of these are mapped to it. So now when I change anything here it's going to change in both scoreboards. So let me just show you the example of how that works. I'll change this to 
me for just a moment and you can see where it changed here in the smaller version and then where it changed here in the larger version. And the reason why is because we have it mapped to both of those particular inputs. And the same thing for player two. Let's take a look at that one. Player two, we have we, this same exact thing. We brought, uh, we clicked this plus button here twice, which brought in both of these uh, lines here. We chose the input as Carom Billiard Scoreboard, and then we mapped it to the title portion of that element to player two name. So same thing. Well, now when we change either one of these, it's going to change in both. And you can see where this one right here, where the large one changed to Connie and the small one changed to Connie as well. And we'll go ahead and put it back the way that it was. And you can see where the name Connie Q comes back in. And, and as far as the score goes for player one score, what we did is we came up here, we clicked on widget and we clicked on score widget. Um, and then we typed in player one score, not exclamation point, player one score. We came down here and we clicked on this button twice, this plus button, it brings in these two lines. We're going to have it to this version of the Carom Billiard Scoreboard, and then we're going to have it to this version down here of the Carom Billiard Scoreboard. The first one is the smaller version, the second one is the larger version. On this right here, we're going to make sure that we map this to player one score, and we're going to do this for both of them. Player one score. And then what I did is I went to customize and I just clicked on plus one, plus two, plus three, and plus four. And that way we'll have buttons there for if four points are scored, three points are scored, two points are scored, or one point is scored. And we have this right here. So if I have this set up correctly, when I press on this plus four button, you're going to see player one score on both of these change to four and they do. And as you can imagine, we did the exact same thing for player two score. We just duplicated it, slid it over, changed the name of this to player two score. And then we came over here and where it says player one score, we changed these to player two score. And we click OK. So now when I, let's set this back to zero. Now I'm going to uh, click on the plus three and you should see both of the player two scores, which is Connie Q, you should see these change to three. And they do. Click this little arrow and we reset it. Okay, we click on the plus four, it goes to four. Say that it should have only been plus three. What we can do is use these arrows, arrow keys. We'll click the down arrow and we change it from four to three. So we've showed you the two text field widgets that we've used right here, and we showed you the score widgets that we used right here. Now these for innings and for set A and set B, I also use the score widget. So under inning right here, I do not have these mapped, so let's go ahead and map these. So let me click on inning. Go ahead and bring it up over here so it's a little bit easier to see. This is a score widget. So we're going to come down here, click on the Title Mapping Plus button. We're going to do it twice for both of the uh, different Carom Billiards graphics that we have. We're going to click on here, select the first Carom Billiards scoreboard we come to, and then we're going to select the one that's second to last. And then since we're working with inning, we want to make sure that we select inning. Now, when I come over here and I click the plus one, you can see that on both of these, the inning goes up by a digit of one. So each time I click on this, it's going to increase by a digit of one. For set A and set B, the exact same thing. These are score widgets as well. We're going to map this to set A. What I did is I clicked on the plus button twice in the title mapping. It brought me in two spots. I brought in the Carom Billiards inputs, both of them, and then I set them both to set a score. And then when I click on this plus one, it's going to change that set 
each time and you can see where it does that. I'll just go ahead and duplicate this one and I'm going to bring it down. From where it says set a copy, I'm going to change this to set B. And then I'm going to scroll and then I'm going to scroll down here where I have it set to set A score. I'm going to change it to set B score on both of them. And now when I click on this plus one here, let me reset it to zero. And you can see where both of them went to zero. But now when I click on the plus one, each one of these are going to increase by a digit of one. Now, a minute ago I showed, I talked about this one here for a player one average. I'm gonna click on the duplicate, bring this over. Since we're dealing with player two now, let's go ahead and change the color as well as this right here. And then where this said player one average, player one average score before, we're gonna change this to player two average score. And click OK. So now, let's say their average is a little bit higher, 3.56567. You can see whatever I put in this right here, it's just being displayed in both of these. And the reason why is this is a text field widget. So let me show you that again. We'll come over here. You can see where the input has been brought in twice. That's for both of the scoreboards. And then you can see under the title, we're now doing player two average score. And then we have this right here, which is a text field widget. I don't have that up there, so let's go ahead and add it. We're gonna click on widget. We're gonna come over here and click on text field. Let's bring it up here so we can see it. We're gonna call this event name. Again, we're gonna click on the title mapping twice bring both of the Carom Billiard scoreboard graphics in. And we are going to map this to right here where it says bottom text field. And click OK. So right now you can see both of them say Carom Billiards International Tournament. Say we want to change this to something a little bit different. Let's just call this Carom Billiards World Championship. And you can see where both of the scoreboards change to Carom Billiards World Championship. Okay, that will conclude our tutorial today where we talked about Creating, creating a Carom Billiard scoreboard. We created the scoreboard in vMix GT Title Designer. And like I said, if you guys are interested in how that was made step by step, uh, just drop me a comment uh, underneath this uh, tutorial here, and I will go ahead and, and make a more in-depth uh, tutorial on how that uh, particular scoreboard was created. After that scoreboard was created, we then went over to vMix UTC, and I showed you how to use some controls very simple controls. We just uh, actually use two widgets. We use the score widget and the text field widget, and we were able to operate that scoreboard. I also showed you how to bring in a uh, duplicate scoreboard by clicking the title button twice and, and mapping it to more than one input by duplicating uh, the title. And uh, then we went on and showed you how we uh, controlled it uh, using vMix UTC. If you like what we're doing here at One Man Stream, please give us a thumbs up and a like. Make sure that you do subscribe so that you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. Uh, this very likely will be the last tutorial for this year. So uh, wherever you are and however you celebrate, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I hope to see everyone back in 2024. As always, thank you so much.